Morning VC, it's Steve here with you again, um, checking in on some recent finds. I think this is volume 49. Um, quite a few, a couple of other videos, but quite a bit to show you today. So I hope everyone's well. Mixture of singles and albums from all the charity shops and record stores. Um, so without further ado, let's start with singles. City Boy, Birmingham Band, 5705, their big single. Top 10 in the UK in 1978, also reached the top 30 in the States as well. So, next single, Dream Academy, Life in a Northern Town. This was their only hit single. Um, features on the vocal talents of Nick Laird Clowns, who went on to write with Nick, uh, Dave Gilmore for Pink Floyd, and especially on Division Bell. Um, and in fact, I think Dave Gilmore helped produce this up, produce this song. So, excellent song. If you want, if you want to just have a yarn, see a hit single, make sure you have a, a really good tune. Just past St Valentine's Day, so this is St Valentine's Day Massacre EP. Came out at Head Girl School, or Head Girl as it was known, uh, on the A side. It's please their version of Johnny King Pirates, please don't touch. B side, whoop, is they recorded each each song so each band's song so girl school did bomber and motorhead did emergency and it did feature on drums denise defort who was covering for phil taylor who had broke he'd broken his neck at the time and wasn't able to drum craftworks the model now and it's backed by computer love um originally released in 1981 as computer love Part of the Computer World album. Um, somebody had, had the record company had the bright idea of flipping it to put the model as the lead single, and in 1982 it became the number one single. Um, unexpected, but I think it turned a lot of people onto Kraftwerk. Final single in this batch is Modern Lovers, Jonathan Rich from the Modern Lovers, Roadrunner once and then back Roadrunner twice. Excellent single. Um, I think I preferred to Rogue Runner twice actually, um, of the two. So, moving on to the albums, a staple of charity shops, bargain bins, Herb Alberts and Tijuana Brass going places, released uh, on an international label in the UK. Um, you've got here Tijuana Taxi, uh, Spanish Flea, they're, they're some tunes I know. But you also got the version, you know, version of Walk Don't Run and Zorba the Greek. So that's probably my third album, Herb Albert album. I'm not that I'll go out my way to look for Herb Albert, but you know, if I pick it up and it's in need for me, I'll take it. This is my guilty pleasure of the 80s. Um, Aha and Scoundrel Days, their second album. I can't see what, well, I can tell you why I like Aha. Good pop tunes. But I've probably mentioned this, I do like my music to have a little bit of darkness in it. And there's a hint, lot of it in, in, on this album. You've got um, I've Been Losing You, Cry Wolf, and probably my favourite song there's Manhattan Skyline. Really, it's a great album, great pop album. I'm so pleased to find it in such great nick. Some classical albums. <laughs> it looks like it's been... The dog had got at it a bit. Um, this is a Deutsche Grammophone recording on Piano Concerto Number no. Five in E flat, featuring Wilhelm Klimt on piano with the Berlin Philharmonic. Uh, I think this recording dates 1960. So I'm not sure how old it is, but it plays. The next classical um, could have been yours for one pound twenty-five at the time. Beethoven's Symphony No. 9, Chor Ergo. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's got but side A, you've got it in D minor. See, see that? And then it's a D minor, line in D minor, opus 1, 2, 5, and then you've got the conclusion on side 2. Time for a quick look. Next album, a few months back, I picked this up in a pound bin and it, I found it to be unplayable. So I 
can another copy another of the reissue of Diamond Dogs. Plays much better. I'll probably see I paid a little bit more for it. And sometimes, you know, moral of the story, sometimes on PC, you get what you pay for. And this this was the case. But I was pleased to pick it up. I'm happy to have this album now. Um, probably the end of his glam period with Seasons. Uh, we've got Rebel Rebel, we've got Diamond Dogs, 1984. This was going to be a concept album based on 1994, but George Orwell's widow didn't give permission to, to Bowie to use the novel <coughs> as the basis of the album, so he just then went and just did the album as so. Next album, mm -hmm. Pound, please found it in the Pound Bins. This is Credence Creel Clearwater Revival featuring John Fogerty and its Chronicle and Stair Greatest Hits album. We've got all the, you know, Bad Moon Rising, which was the number one single for, for the band. Uh, up and around the bend, put a spell on you, Crown Mary, Green River, Travelling Band. Um, this version I heard it through the grapevine. Um, Susie Q. I mean, it's got all the stuff, the stuff on, on, on there. It is sad how that how the band sort of petered it out and, you know, Fogarty. Didn't, couldn't speak to the rest and even you know, make contact with his brother Tom when he was dying of AIDS. It's the whole thing sad. I found the whole thing sad. I mean, I thought um, when he didn't go into the rock and roll of fame and didn't have the rest of the band, he wouldn't have the uh, surviving band of the band with him. I thought that was just a bit bang out, really. Only, you know, only to, if Kiss can be to, on stage for, you know, for, about, for, for about half an hour. You know, you didn't have to play with them. I just thought it was a bit wrong. But, you know, I haven't been through the situation they've been through. So, this album we picked up for a pound. That's primarily because the cover is well beat. But the final place, this is The Doors, LA Woman. Um, the final Doors album. This is a reissue from the, I think, from the 80s. And the shoe pack design and the, and the actual vinyl itself is the butterfly label not um yeah <coughs> good album to finish with this band go Morrison man but Jim Morrison passed away not long after um, and you know you've got LA Woman Love and Madeline and then off it appears to be resistance to finish your career Riders on the Storm it's just a great song now next lot of uh, records it features a band that I was happy to pick up. Um, local Birmingham band, I've got a few records, but this sort of like helps complete, complete my collection of this band. This is Electric Like Orchestra, and this is a Dutch uh, release. It's called um, Harvest, but it's on Milestone, and it's a two LP set, and it's just their debut album, ELO, Electric Like Orchestra, and then ELO 2 packaged as as a double album. Um, and and I, I, mean, I paid eight pounds for this, and I am pleased to have got this because I think if I tried to buy the two albums separately, it would cost me a lot more. Um, yeah, the covers you can see a little bit scratch on the cover on the ELO two, but you know got great out great album. I mean, the version on Rollo with Back Home, and if you hear it, the full version of it, really is excellent. Then in the pound bin, and I knew this was going to be a gamble picking it up. Um, out the blue, it's probably the high point of Electric Helo's career. Um, Turn to Stone, Sweet Talking Woman, Mr. Blue Sky, Wild West Helo. It's just a great album. And then the live show that accompanied it, um, I think you know, it, it, it would have had to be worth seeing. I have seen television programs that they did a charity show um, in the UK. and. It was recorded. Tony Curtis introduced them and showed with the with the like ship coming in and taking off at the end of the show. Yes, it, there's a few scratches on there, but you know I can always pick up a better copy later. You know the cover not in great nick, but I was pick, pleased to pick up that. Another uh, final ELO album I picked up, which was Secret Messages. This came out in 1983. And it's got rock and roll. Is King is the main song on it, and 
the orchestration start to go away. It does you right? It does contain backwards messages. Um, yeah, yeah. It's you know, I think Jeff Lynne at that time had started to lose interest in the band. I think um, pretty much got rid of the band. It was just um, just him, Richard Tammy, and Bev Bevanet really at that point. I think Louis Clark might have helped. Another album picked up for a pound. Pretty pleased with this. It's not in the greatest nick, but again, on the time of Motown label, Full Top's greatest hits. Uh, yeah, it's just, I've already got the greatest hits, but this is more of the greatest hits of the period. I love that these old covers where they go file under popular file group. Must be for the record. Must be for the record stores. Um, yeah, pleased with that. Yeah, it's got all the standard stuff that you expect. Genesis, Three Sides Live, this is their third live album, it came out in 1982, this sort of like covers, really covers the period from, and then there were three up to Abacab, so there's basically three albums there, um, you've got Turn It On Again, Dodo, Abacab, Behind the Lines, Duchess, Me and Sarah Jane, Follow You, Follow Me, Misunderstanding, you've got Medley, Lynn McCage, Cinema Show and Sliverman, and then you've got Afterglow. And then side four was interesting in this recording in 1976. So it's an old recording where you've got one for the wine, fountain of Salamis, and watch of the sky. Uh, it and watch it's, it's and watch of the skies. Not the greatest live album, but it's a good live album. Um, yeah, at that at that time. Um, yeah, on the charisma label, very good. Like. Um, 10 CC, and I was really pleased to find this album in such a great nick. This is Godly and Cream Isism. Is it? I think it's how you pronounce it. And this is the big album. It's got the, the singles suddenly that in 1981. They had, they, at that point, they became well known as video makers. And they had a surprise hit single on your phone. It was such a surprise, they didn't even make a video for it themselves. Then you've got snack, uh, wedding bells, a snack attack. You can see what, what what they brought to the table of 10cc. They were the experimental. There's quite a bit of experimental on, on that on this album. Um, yeah, pleased to pick that up. Great album. Again, in the pound. I know he gets a bad rap, um, Billy Joel, but I actually quite like this album. I know it's still got rock and roll to me. It was. Rolling Stone reckoned it was the worst song ever to feature the word rock and roll in it. I don't quite enjoyed it, but I loved Awful Aina. I really like that song. Um, so please have it. It's in great nick. It's not bad for a pair, so it plays well. Um, nothing wrong with a bit of Billy Joel. Now, very rare you find this woman in the pound bins, and it's partly because quite a lot of them, like I think it's got coffee damage, tea damage on the album, um, on the cover and on the scene sleeve, but the album plays, it is Madonna Like a Prayer, it came out in 1989, um, quite controversial when it first came out, particularly the video to Like a Prayer, religious imagery, in fact, you know, the, the cover looks a bit dodgy, but then when you come into it, you've got, I didn't realise she recorded with Prince, Love Song is, is a, a collaboration with him, written and produced. Um, Express Yourself, Cherish, and Dear Jesse, which I think was my favourite song of, on this, because it's slightly different, it was like a almost psychedelic homage. Um, but yeah, I was pleased with that. This album was produced with, mainly by Patrick Leonard. Um, she went for her producers to each album. Almost to the end of the video. A bit more opera, um, classical music. This is Offenbach's Gate Parisienne. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, you've got the hint of the can can on side two. Um, and that's why you've got that. you've got a picture of the can can girl. So happy with that. And the final album up in this batch. This is Rock Follies. Now Rock Follies was a television program that came out in 1976. And it told the um, uh, it told the, the tales of the like the struggles of the little lady a band called Little Lady, um, Rock Follies with the three actresses Charlotte Connor, Billy Cobbington, and Loretta. Um, it's 
it's uh, such a popularity problem. It's got to number one. The album got to number one. Uh, it, it's up to note because they were all actresses, not singers. Uh, Rue Lanska carried on with that, and so did Charlotte Cornwell. Julie Covert and ended up having a number one single with her with Don't Cry for Me and Tina when it first came out. Um, the Revita, the first pronounced with Revita, and I think best version of that song. Yeah, as an album, it does stand, it does hold its own, you know. And in fact, I have to say, music was by Andrew McCann of uh, Roxy Music. He put together the music, and now Schumann put the lyrics together. As an album on its own, it does stand out, actually, and that's probably the best thing I can say about it. Um, there was a second series of Rock Holly Cinema 7. It sort of got lost a little bit. There was an industrial strike with the, bro the broadcaster, so it sort of got lost. And it wasn't as good. You, uh, search YouTube. You can find it. You should be able to find the episodes and see what, what you think. Very much a product of its time. So that concludes the recent finds. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, hope you all have a good week. Um, so until the next one then, take care.